Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engineers. Well today, I'm going to be showing you uh, a progress report on my piston engines. Oh yeah. Now, for those who have been watching this, I guess, quote unquote series for a while, you've sort of seen the progress I've made as I was going through different stages. I don't know why, but for some reason I was on a phase where I was just trying to make, like, uh, the actual piston rods. I, I honestly don't really know where I was getting at with that, because uh, the whole point of this whole thing was to, you know, you know use pistons. Like this. Anyway, so I'm going to be showing you what I've found and what I've managed to do. And yes, I have managed to make a actual piston engine, which you'll see towards the end of today's video. So stay tuned. And with that... Let's begin. Okay, so we start off with small grid. Nice, uh, easy, small grid. And the whole sort of concept was a uh, load of pistons on the top. And these pistons would uh, spin around a makeshift crankshaft. A little bit like if I extended this piston. And then hope that it goes the right way. There we go. A little bit like this. And... It You've got to basically try and use, there we go, <clears throat> the inertia of the thing moving. And that works pretty well. I have limits set so, you know, like it knows where the top and the bottom of it is. Uh, and I was trying to mess about with sensors to try and see if I could get it to work. Uh, if I turn on the sensor field range. I turn on the sensors. It doesn't work very well. That's all I can say. Such a waste of talent. Uh, basically, the plan was sort of like you'd have sensors to set the piston to reverse at the different times it would need. Um, but, and all that, sure, it would work and it would make sense. But we have the main issue of how do I then keep the crankshaft moving all the way through? Um, because obviously this part of the piston has to almost go through the crankshaft. That's why on actual piston engines they, you know, it spins around an internal rod. We can't do that in space engineers, which I have proven prior. So, I have to try and find a way of being able to let a thing go through a thing. It's good news in a way, because I know how to make a thing go through a thing. So, with the little trick of having an actual rotor... Uh, head on a suspension block it means we can this grid technically isn't part of this grid which means it can just go whoop, straight through and if you didn't know that was a thing there you go really cool really cool trick however we run into a problem and i'll show you the problem and then i'll see if you can work out why this would be such a problem if i was to put a any kind of subgrid type block right there and i try and go whoop Top bit works. Now this little uh, phasey through thing does not work with subgrids. I'll tell you the reason. This block, or this set of block here, this green, this has no hitbox with whatever is connected to this grid. So the grid of the actual um, suspension. So any of uh, this grid here which technically would be, you know, these blocks here. However, as soon as you create a uh, subgrid, that becomes a new grid altogether, or that bit doesn't, but this head does, which means these two have collisions again. So what I tried to do was I messed about with trying to make this part the air suspension block. And then if I placed a block like a, some things here, however, you'll see the problem. So this, this suspension block, the only part which could technically work is this head of a rotor. That's the only block that this air piston could be have no collision with, if that makes sense. Report back to me when, uh, I don't know, 
when it makes sense. So basically, this piston here, the only thing that can't um, collide with it, it'll just fade straight through, is this head right there. So the, these two yellow. Obviously, that doesn't work. So then I tried something different. I tried uh, over here. I tried making it like this. Again, doesn't work because obviously this, any of this stuff cannot be collided with any of this stuff. Again, doesn't doesn't work. You have all these subgrids here, which mean it doesn't make a difference. If I tried to extend this. Did that go the way you thought it was going to go? Nope. I found something. This did not work in my last amount of testing. Whoa. Hmm. Interesting. I then may have to do some more testing on this. This may work. Anyway, then I, tr I tried a longer rod. So the only thing that's different here is uh, it's, um, it stands further. And you see here, it doesn't work. Does this, part, does this lower part not have a collision? I may need to do some more testing on the pistons, you know. Not noticing this was a thing, the only real block that I worked out I could use was the railing. And not any particular railing, but the railing double. And but that is because the railing double is a unique block to any other block. If I placed the railing double like this and then put another block, this block is connected to this block. However, it has a complete pass through. You can sort of see where, the, where I'm getting at with this. So that means if you built a large grid version, you could make something that can pass through the main shaft. So that means if I set, let's say I set this one to its stand. Uh, so if I set this to its stand and then set this to reverse. You can sort of see this block can nice and easily pass through the main drive shaft. But obviously you don't want to be stood here doing all of this crazy nonsense. Tweaking all of that. So then I did made iteration number two, which is still only two pistons, although I added the rest of the four. And that I'm messing about with sensors, which when hit a certain block, uh, reverse. Piston one, two, on. There we go. You can see we have a somewhat working piston engine. Isn't that glorious? As you can see, the, the uh, main drive shaft here is connected all the way through using all of these different um, double railings. And you can see this end piece is spinning. And this is just using two of the four pistons that I'm going to try and design with this thing. And believe it or not, it's actually really simple to turn this off just by turning off the pistons. Completely locks it all up. So then we move on to the next stage. Which is me hooking up a third piston. Uh, have I set... I have. Good. I believe if I turn this on, hopefully it won't detonate. Whoa. There we go. It just had to take it just took a sec for it to get into the loop. And as you can see, we now have the ray pistons doing their thing. And I I'm gonna have to spend some time. I haven't properly done it. I've done it a little bit, but not fully. Uh, tweaking the lengths of all of these, the exact timings. Like there's a lot of this you can time. So depending on how far away the block is depends on how close uh, this 
part gets before it'll fire again, sort of thing. So you, you can do lots and lots of tweaking. Uh, and then we have this one, which I believe is probably all set up, right? I'm guessing I'm guessing it's all nicely. Yeah, this this one's good, this one's ready. <coughs> and then if I click the button, as you can see, all four pistons are firing. You see it's a little bit shaky. This is just because the timing isn't exactly perfect. It's not far off. So what's happening is it extends, and then the second that the um, sensor triggers this wall, you can see it goes green for a sec, that starts the reversing process. If you notice, the pistons aren't going up and down all the time. They have a second where they stop at either fully up or fully down. The shorter that I can get this time where the piston isn't moving, the more streamlined the actual mechanism is going to be. As you can see, it works. Now, the next thing... Also, by the way, this piston, all it's doing is toggling the piston on and off. The next thing I had to do was actually just build a flywheel. And this is also the one I've just showed off all the different subgrids and stuff, just so you can see, see it a bit better. If I turn on this one, uh, this one's just for a little bit of fun. There's a lot of weight. There is a lot of weight, and it doesn't particularly like the weight, mainly because it is not a very well-timed system. But you can see that it does actually somehow work. It doesn't look healthy. But it somehow works. Oh dear. I'm just going to toggle this off before it detonates. Yeah, that seems safe, having your uh, main, main sort of axle just bent like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's fine. And the answer is, no, this is not clang friendly. If I was to place a, literally an off one right here, it has so much clang stored in it. And that's just because, again, I don't think it's fully, um, perfect on the extensions so like how much yeah there we go how much i have these pistons set to extend like their maximum minimum if i tweak that i can create less clang i think i don't know we'll see but i've got it to a stage currently where it actually works and that is what i wanted to show off today i enjoy messing around with mechanisms in this game um, I'm thinking about doing like a mini series just every now and then or even just YouTube shorts of different uh, mechanisms in the game so just or different mechanisms expressed in with space engineers physics so if, if you want to see stuff like that stay tuned ah, boom but that is where we're going to end it for today's video. So hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did, as always, remember to hit the like button. It helps me out more than you think it does and shows that this crazy series is one you want to see continue in the future. As always, my name has been Quantum Chief, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!